two, knit one, heart two, episode two forty three. Hello, California knitter gals. Thank you for the picture. That was awesome. <laughs> um, if you are a new viewer, thank you for coming. And if you're an old viewer, welcome back. This is Sheila, also no, uh, Sheila D thirty seven, also known as Sheila. Sorry. And I'm uh, Wendy, also known as Penny Wendy. I think that's what I screwed up, but oh. I. I reversed the order. I, I mixed things up. Sorry. I don't remember what I do. Um, anyway, uh, it's gorgeous here today while we're recording. It's like Beautiful. almost 60 degrees outside. So, yeah, hence the short sleeve shirt. And um, our shout outs, <clears throat> our shout outs for this week are... We have two knit-alongs going. You know, we drew prizes last week, so we have the Blue Moon Fiber Arts Any Base, Any Color, Any Pattern knit-along. That's still going along, and a winner will be drawn for that on the first day that we record in April, because we draw a winner monthly. And then we have our two-month knit-along, which is anything knit with variegated yarn. Again, any weight, any color, any pattern, as long as the yarn is variegated. And by variegated, two plus colors. Would you call this variegated? That is variegated. That's a variegated yarn. That's a variegated yarn. Your this Show is not a variegated yarn. It is striping. Although it looks variegated this in this game. This has a couple of colors in it, but it's so one color that it is not variegated. So, hopefully, this is variegated. <laughs> if you have questions, you can ask us. Somebody did ask me by message. I don't know if they messaged you, too. No, I don't think um, so. Whether loom and machine knits count. And I said, as long as it's knitting, it counts. So, if you're knitting on a um, knitting loom or on a machine, it's still knitting. So, you can make things. Her daughter does loom. Um, the one thing I request on this thread is that we just post finished objects only. A couple of people posted. On the? On the works. Um, all the variegated? Variegated, that's all. The um, Blue Moon one, don't worry about it. I've been having fun watching everybody and commenting. Yeah. But on, on this one particular, I just ask that they be finished objects. Please. Yeah, and you guys are welcome to start like a chat thread. Or we could, I it could call yeah we could call it the variegated in a long chat thread if you guys want to chat in that and you can show progress photos in that one that's yeah. actually a good idea yeah to encourage so I'll, people. I'll open that up when, yeah after that this. sounds like a good idea but yeah it makes it hard because there's so many more people post in that it's harder Compared to find to the, the balloon, winners yeah and, and what I'll to do know is what, I'll, I'll swoosh yeah the two that are in yeah we can right? swoosh it to the new thread so that'll be good um. Yeah, and feel free to start threads in our group. We totally don't care. No. Anybody can start a thread, unless you're a jerk. <laughs> then we'll just make it go away. That's never happened, but you I never know. It's always a first time. Like, Or if it's a spam thread trying to sell us, like, a bridge in Brooklyn, we're going to spam. We're going to delete that. <laughs> but if you want to say, I'm having a bad day, who else is having a bad day thread, you can do that. So, anyway, Sheila goes first oh. this week. Sorry, I was actually... So, on the dance card... <laughs> sorry, on the dance card. I gotta get it out there for my Boston peeps. On the dance card. Uh, I am literally just casting on a sock. Can't even see it, really. So, I am casting on a pair of socks for my son, my youngest son. He picked Opal Cotton which I believe is superwash wool, 38%, 32% polymade, which is some sort of synthetic, and 30% cotton. <coughs> Bless you. Excuse me. Um, I don't know if there's a color. It's color number 2506. Farb means color. Oh, all right. So color. It looks like it's going to be um, a cell striping, maybe? Could be. You know, one of those faux fair isles. Could be. Opal's pretty famous for it, so. It's pinks, yellows, oranges. It's going to be pretty. Yeah. It and if a I. Tequila sunrise. Yeah, if I have any left over, I may um, 
make a pair of short socks for me. Yeah, that's a good idea. A nice that's quite on. a bit of yardage. Yeah, but I'm not sure. I've never. I have not recently made him socks, so I don't. I'm casting on seventy two stitches. Oh. He's got wide feet. He's got flat feet. Are you doing cuff down? I am. Oh. Just because I've never made him a sock specifically for oh. him. Yeah. So um, until I know what his size is, I'm casting on seventy two, and I'll. He wants it probably mid calf. I'd call it. Yeah. I was when I was thinking about making him socks. I'm like, oh, he loves the short socks. This is gonna be great. It will take me to. No, Mama, I want them long. I'm like, of course you do. <laughs> At least he didn't want them knee highs. You wouldn't get them knee highs. I don't do <laughs> knee highs for anyone. But you did. I did, but he doesn't wear them. <laughs> After all that trouble. Well, because they fell down. I I, yeah. I increased them too much. Yeah. So right now I have them and I and as a matter of fact, I made him another pair and I gotta find those socks to see if they either fit me or one of the kids. I think Max has them. Probably stole them. Well, I gave them to him because Cam wasn't wearing them. Oh, I'm like, yeah. if you're not going to wear them, I might as well give them to somebody who will actually appreciate it. Because that yarn was expensive at the time. That was my first really expensive yarn yeah. that I paid for. But the, it, they were black with white dots or something. Yeah. I don't remember. Nice yarn. A wool cotton blend. But, um, yeah. Max has been wearing his socks to death. I'm like, um, you're going to have a hole in that soon. <laughs> I'm like, I don't know what to tell you. They're not, I told him they're not made like his Patton's Croy. Yeah, they're not. But he made loves them. Like like. Well, that's nice. And it's nice when you give a hand knit gift to somebody and they really enjoy it. Yes. My sister in law, I gave her a bunch of my socks because I've like refilled my sock drawer so much. So I gave her a bunch of my older ones that I don't wear as much anymore and she loves them. Well, that's what I'm doing is I, so the socks that I've made so far, the three that are for me, I have not worn them yet because I'll go through come winter time what needs to get thrown out and then I'll throw them in the mix. Yeah. And I have a lot that actually is, um, need to get thrown out. I repaired a pair of my worsted weight because I wear them around the house. Yeah. But I need to throw on a pair of that. So I, it's time, it's time to reevaluate. So what sock pattern are you going to knit? Probably just a vanilla. Cuff down. Yeah, just a vanilla cuff down. It will be like mindless, although the next week I'm not going anywhere, so I'm stuck at the hospital. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's good, right? Yeah, no, it is. It's just today with it. Yeah, it, it is what it is. Um, well, I have on the dance card sock number two of my Jack socks, which I did work on this week. So I am finally past the toe. And I'm about a third of the way up to the where I would cast, where I would start for the heel. So, not that high up yet. But at least I knit a little bit this week. Yeah, I have about, I have about three and a half more inches to knit. So I guess I'm about halfway to the heel. Um, and that is in uh, Fiber Nymph Dye Works Lucky Cat colorway in the bounce base. And I love the Jack pattern. I've, I think this is either the third or the fourth time I've made socks mm. with this pattern. It's just a really simple slip stitch pattern. Mm -hmm. It gives it just a little, it's got a, it's free. It's got with a pearl, pearl, a pearl and a slip and a pearl. And it just makes it look like it has some stripes right. in it without kind of messing with the striping. So I like it for self-striping. So there's that. Indigo Frost is a sad, sad story. So I noticed when we were recording last time, because I, I knit a bunch of it last week, um, that the starting at some point in the, in the pattern, my little eyelets stopped lining up. They, like, are off by quite a bit. You can see it here. I think it starts. There's like... Is it supposed to be like two, then one, then two? Is it no. supposed to be offset at all? No. <laughs> no. Oh, and this might be why, because I seem to be missing... I'm, I'm missing one there. That's where my problem was. Do you see how there's okay. missing one right there? There's supposed to be a hole here. Uh -huh. That's why it got thrown off. I, I must... I don't know what I did, but... It's off. So at first I thought I was just going to live with it. You can't really see it. 
but then it started bugging me so much. So I have to rip this back. So I just put it away when I realized this and I haven't touched it. Sitting in the naughty corner. Yeah, I need to rip back like five rows, including my increase row. So that's just like a lot of, you know how it is when you hate to do that. But that's knit out of um, Dream Color Classy in the In Vino Veritas colorway. And I'm on my second skein. I have four more skeins of that to knit and hopefully I'll straighten out that problem. And last but not least is my Cash Cash Cowl. Still going. I knit on this a little bit this mm -hmm. week. Yeah, that much. Picked it up and did it. When, I, when I, my other stuff was too far away, I was like, oh, I'll just grab <laughs> that. Um, this is knit out of um, Into the World, Manchester Sock, in the double rainbow colorway, which is really pretty. And I'm just going to keep knitting until I finish up what's left of this skein. And then I'll put it together. So, And like I said... That's probably going to end up being a gift to somebody because it's not really my style, but I really wanted to knit it because it's so pretty. So that's all I have. So I just want to say I was casting on and not really paying attention. I have exactly 72 stitches on the needle. Good for you. Uh, that doesn't happen very often. I think I'm going to like this. This reminds me of orange sherbet. Yeah, it does. It reminds me of summer colors. Yeah. Like popsicle colors. Yeah. Orange sherbet, watermelon sherbet. Went into a patient's room. She was eating orange sherbet. And I'm like, oh, that looks good. She goes, my favorite's watermelon. <laughs> we were talking about putting jimmies on it. And if nobody knows what jimmies are, they have the chocolate sprinkles. Jimmies. Not to be confused with regular sprinkles, which are not chocolate. There's jimmies. And then there are sprinkles. Which are rainbow colors. Usually. Those are rainbow colors. Sometimes they're holiday colors, whatever. But if they're jimmies, they're chocolate. So if somebody says, I would like a cone with jimmies on it, it means chocolate. That's the Boston way. That's boy, the definitely. Boston way. Because I always, I, I've like lived so many other places that I always say chocolate jimmies. Which is kind of like saying an ATM machine, which would be an automatic, automatic teller color machine. machine. <laughs> but there, are not everybody who's not from Massachusetts knows that Jimmy's are just Jimmy's. They're chocolate. Because I always, that's my standard ice cream store order is a sugar cone, vanilla ice cream with Jimmy's. See, and if I can get it, it's orange sherbet with Jimmy's. I, oh, I know so gross. it's not though it's almost like an orange creamsicle I don't know there's something about it that's just so me and the patient were talking about how she likes watermelon sherbet with Jimmy's I'm like I'll have to try that next time <sighs> there's just something it's just so good I have to tell you orange sherbet and orange popsicles are like on the level of like ranking of flavors they are so close to the bottom I think the only thing I don't like more is um, strawberry ice cream oh, really? Yeah, see, I like orange. Fan. But, so, and then chocolate and orange is just like, oh, it's so good. Not for me. Tell I don't me. like fruit mixed with chocolate. I know that a lot of people do. Like strawberry and chocolate? I will eat a strawberry dipped chocolate, but I'm not a huge fan oh, of that taste. Okay. Um, so it's just, mm. it's just me. It's my weird thing. Orange and chocolate are good. Mm. But I know a lot of people love fruit and chocolate, so I'm not dissing you. I'm just telling you. No, I know. So, rate your date. Write your date. You I have, have a, date. a date to rate that I just finished. I was pumping this out. So this is the Lime Beanie Hat by Heather Keen, Boutros Babe, or Five Arista Files. I think I covered everything. Um, so she did hers in worsted weight. I did mine in sock weight at a Malabrigo Indesita colorway that um, I think is from 2008. So this is a deep stash. It's one of my oldest that I have listed. And it's from original Mal, uh, Malabrigo the, sock. The, like the first, first run, run. The first run of Malabrigo um, sock. Um, so what I did is I did it in sock yarn two and a half, uh, US two and a half. I don't know the metric. I'm sorry. And I tacked it on in the back as I knit it, which I was trying it out. It didn't really work out so great. I mean, it works out good here. But not so much. There's a couple of divots. But um, it's really nice and soft. And it's kind of lightweight. It can be shoved into a pocket. Oh, yeah. So. But it's got that double warmth around the ear. It does. It's got the double warmth and air to come up on the top. So. Not bad. <laughs> that looks great. <laughs> 
And come as he is. I mean, I got more hair than my son does, so his probably will sit better on it. And if he doesn't like it, my brother will certainly like it. Yeah, it will thing. not go to waste in my household somewhere. So Although that was Cam, good. Give you a break from socks. I don't think it will fit on Cam. Yeah, it would not fit on my husband's head. My husband has really It gave me a break from socks, but I was able to use up sock yarn. I would definitely do this again. I enjoyed doing it. Yeah, that. I've knit that. Well, I use. Well, I like the, the line. Beading. I use the lined portion of that pattern to line hats before. Yeah, I really like um, the line beanies. My kids like the line. Like Max especially likes the line beanies. You know, young kids they're into beanies these days. So um, I will probably do it again with probably more leftover sock yarn. I have a little bit left over that I'll probably make a baby hat out of. Well, I don't have any dates to rate because I'm still working on the other half of my jack saw. So, that's all I have. I had it last week. You have a hoe. PhD. I have a PhD. PhD. <laughs> no offense to the hoe likers, but I like PhD. It sounds more academic. <laughs> so, I have um, a PhD in what? I have a PhD in sock yarn. <laughs> in, I have a PhD in sock yarn. <laughs> I actually have a real PhD. <laughs> I, I don't. I don't. And a PhD in sock yarn. That's so weird. I forget sometimes. that <laughs> it's like, oh yeah, I went to school for extra time. So anyway, um, yeah. So that I don't have any real dates to rate. Um, and there's no whirlwind romance. And that's all I have to say about that. Um, future dates. She's counting. I just wanted to make sure. Uh, future dates for me would just be the sock for my son. Um, I do have another blue moon sock I got to knit. But I think after that, because um, I've been trying to do every other. Yeah. Just so that, you know, I because I like to knit socks. I, I want to do a self-striping uh, for me. And I don't know if I'll do fiber nymph or I have some mustache yarn, I think, a yellow. Oh, yeah. And I have fishnet screen. Yeah, that's right. That's a cute skein. If I didn't have to cast on for my son, I was going to do that one for March. Oh, yeah, but, that's a good idea. So I don't know. This fits in with March because it's lucky. Yeah. This kind of fits it's in. It's fitting for, with January, this, too. <laughs> this fits in more for April. But um, so I don't know. It obviously sucks. But I definitely want to do some more hats. I know people who would wear them, so um, do it wrong. But I was thinking that the next sock I knit, depending on which color, I'd like to try the skip sock. Oh yeah, I like how it looks in a solid, more solid color. So depending on what. Yeah, I've knit that one. You've knit that one a couple of times yeah, too. Yeah, I like that's one of my favorites. It's so easy. for me, it's Simple. always socks. I really do actually have to finish my Edison shawl. I have pulled it out. It yeah. came with me to a couple of off-sites. I just haven't gotten there yet. So. It just didn't get worked on. No, we're getting closer, though. Oh, that's good. We'll see what this weekend holds. Maybe if we're watching a movie, I'll pull it out. Yeah, my future date is to finish this up, and then I have a sock design in mind that I want to do with my new sock yarn. So, But I need to, I really need to, like, bite the bullet and rip out that poncho and fix it, because... Once that, I might not do those eyelets anymore. They're kind of they're kind of annoying. Like you have to count every, it's like every four rows to do the eyelets, and I don't know. I have to see how I feel about it. I might just stop doing them and and let it be solid stockinette. But I'll see how I feel after I rip it out. But I really just I really would like to get these socks off the needle because I'm kind of excited to design that sock. Right. But I know if I start it with this still on the needles, it will never get done. So I have to. The only thing I question on the eyelets, will it bug you that they're not continuous? Not as much as it will bug me to do the whole rest of them. Okay. <laughs> it's kind of like a trade off. It'll be like, you know, it's a beautiful stripe of eyelets. Maybe I'll do another stripe before the end, but you know. The only thing <clears throat> my concern is is that the eyelets kind of make it bigger do you know what I mean I don't know how much bigger they make it because 
you do a knit two together afterwards. So mm. it, I, it's. I know, but I'm thinking more like a hole. You got a hole compared to a solid stitch. Like I don't know. I don't know. I I'm not. I'm just gonna see how I feel about it. And you know what I'm saying, though. Right? I do get what you're saying. I'm not sure that it makes. I don't know. It may not. And difference. like you said, it it super wash wool, which will stretch anyway. Stretch. I'm not gonna worry about it. Yeah. It'll be what it's going to be. I might keep doing the eyelets. I don't know. It's just I'm toying with not doing them because they're boring to me. I don't want it to turn out into another um, heat of food day situation where I am hating it and I have to finish yeah. it. And I don't want to put myself through that. When I find that when something's really boring to me, I need to readjust. And there's no reason to like... You should enjoy your knitting. Absolutely. So I might have to I think, readjust. Um, me and a... A viewer were commenting on that recently. Yeah. Um, on one of the threads. So, yeah. We'll see what happens. Um, so, yeah, I don't have much for future dates. i got to finish stuff. Um, bobbles and bling? Nothing. I have one. I told you last week that I ordered self-striping sock yarn from Dye Bulk Yarn. Here it is. It is so freaking beautiful. Which color is that? This is called Catatomic, and it's in her Targi. And these are what she calls watercolor stripes because they're kettle dyed. So you can see, if you look really closely, they don't have the kind of depth of color that these more solid stripes do on fiber nymphs. They're much more, more kettle dyed and subtle looking. So to me, that gives the sock such a different look. It's mm. like somebody literally brushed watercolor and stripes it's really beautiful so I'm super excited this is what I'm going to design my pattern out of because I love it I love her Targi sock base is so cushy like it, it's just cushy feel it it's good somebody else was selling uh, Targi oh that is cushy I know it's good right yeah I love her sock yarn so is this one Targi too yep this one's also cushy I'm is it one hundred percent, or is there a nylon in it? Just out of curiosity. Um, it is ninety percent targi, ten percent nylon. Oh, okay. Excellent, because I don't like it when I knit anything out of a hundred percent for socks. It gets worn through so much easier than if there's just a little bit of nylon in it. So this is um, I love it. It smells really good. She, I don't know what that smells like, but it smells really good. It smells like. Some kind of citrus. Perfume. It's, it's, it's a citrus good. smell, I think. Maybe mm. eucalyptus. It smells good. Anyway, she always sends a little sample. So she sent me a sample of her Polwer Silk DK in the Quarter Sun colorway, and it is very pretty. And I'm like, DK, I could make a sweater out of DK weight, but I'm not going to do that now. I do have big plans to make a sweater out of her yarn. At the end of the year. Well, I was going to say, you just you you made a sweater out of her. I just did, and I and now that I have it, I want another one. No, I because it's so good. Her sweater base, um, it's just her worsted base. I have worn that thing like a sweatshirt. Like I yeah. wear it constantly. It has barely pilled. I don't no, know. I it's know. like magical yarn. <laughs> I love that stuff. So it's really hard wearing, and believe me, I wear it. I. Usually, I think it's on the couch right now. I usually have it somewhere down here, and I throw it on whenever I get cold. So, I'm, I've been planning in my head. I kind of want to do another sweater, semi-solid like that one is. Maybe maybe in a red. I don't know. Ooh, that would be pretty. <laughs> so, I'm just, in my mind, I'm thinking about it. But that's it for my bubbles and plings. Um, Crushes and heartbreaks. Crushes and heartbreaks. For me, this Sunday, we went to Escape the Room. In the oh, Boston. yeah. How was that? It was fun. We had a really good time. So that. it was interesting. Um, you know, they ask us not to take pictures or anything because they don't want... So the whole idea is you have to escape this room in 60 minutes. And by the pictures on a Facebook page, not too many people do it. <laughs> so we had a lot of fun. Um, you know, we get into this room. It's a confessional and we're looking around, and I'm like, do we spend the whole 60 minutes in this? And So it was my brother's family and my family. There were eight of us, and then there was two other people. And this guy had just done one in Virginia and did one in Somerville. 
And but by the sounds of it, it sounds like he had done one in Somerville earlier that day. So he was hyper up, and he was trying to tell us what to do. And it was nice because that would have bugged me a little. We needed. Bit. Oh, my brother was just looking at me. So we needed the help to a certain extent. But so some of the clues, like one was like take away, uh, look at today's confessional times and take away, and Zachary said subtraction. Mama, take away subtraction. I'm like, oh, that's a good idea because what we were trying to do is find the combination. Right. And the guy's like, no, 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 no. Well, sure enough, it was right. I wanted to say it's a simple thing. So it made me feel good that Zachary was able to participate. Well, um, that's something that a kid would say because adults don't usually call it take Take away, away. but you do when you're little. You do because you're trying to use small words or simple words. And we've done that all the time with him. You're taking away, Zachary. Yeah. You know, two apples take away one apple. So that's what he did. It was interesting. We did fail. Uh, We came very close. We were like a clue and a half away. If we had five more minutes, we probably would have gotten it. Yeah. But we had a lot of fun. Um, And then afterwards, we had gone to Fire and Ice. Oh, yeah. That's a nice restaurant. It's fun. Um, So if you've never been to Fire and Ice around here, uh, I don't know if there are other places, but in Boston. I've been to the one. There's one in Cambridge, I think. Or there used to be one in Cambridge. I don't know if it's still there. I don't know. But this was in Boston, um, right across from, like, the common area. Mm -hmm. So we had a lot of fun, and what it is, is you, it's a buffet place, you get a bowl, and you put all your fresh ingredients in the bowl, Yep. and then you take it to this big, well, a guy tells you where to stand, you take it to this big, huge grill, I mean, huge grill, and they cook it for you, you grab your sauce, you know, they just specify don't put the sauce in with the meat yet, so it's kind of like a a Japanese steakhouse hibachi. Mm Mm-hmm. But different foods, and it was it was fun. It was interesting watching them do this. Yeah. And they were having some conversations, and my, apparently my brother and my son were having a lot of fun watching me watch people. Yeah. They're like, Shaley, you get so involved in watching people. <laughs> but I was watching the guys, because they were interacting, and, you know, it was fun. So we had a really good time. So I had my son... And I don't know if this is appropriate to mention, but I had my son, sons, both of them, um, make cards for my sister-in-law. And read the third one. So they did riddles off the the um, internet. And I'm reading the card on my way. And I, 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 I did the face that she did. I missed that one at first. I was laughing at the last one. And then I was like, ooh. So um, we're leaving, and uh, I said to my husband, I said, did you check these cards? <laughs> he goes, no, why? I said, because Zachary wrote something inappropriate on it. Not inappropriate, just not something a little adult for his age. <laughs> Are they listening? I don't know if I can. You can. It'll okay. be fine. So I, I said to my husband, I'm like, what do I do? He goes, I know my my sister-in-law, Stephanie, would have been fine with it, so we gave it to her. And so she's reading Max's card, and he had some riddles on it, and then she's reading some of the questions out loud, and I'm just thinking, oh, my God, oh, my God, oh, my God. (laughs) She gets to Zachary. She starts reading it, and then her face kind of went like what Wendy's did. And we started laughing. I was in tears. So here's some of the – Zachary wrote four jokes. Why Why did the orange stop? Because he ran out of juice. They're cute little jokes. Why is six afraid of seven? Because <laughs> seven, eight, nine. I'm going to read the last one first. Why did the policeman smell bad? This was cute. That's a lot, this is one I thought was the third one because I thought the first line was oh, not a like, joke because yeah. it was kind of gal. <laughs> Why did the policeman smell bad? He was on duty. So this, oh. is, this is the joke that, well, <laughs> I don't even know if I'm going to say it with a straight face. This uses this does not use a swear word, but it does use an adult, adult. term. Uh, why? What do you call a masturbating cow? I'm reading this. I'm like, what? He probably what? doesn't even know what that he word means. He had no clue. So the answer to that, if anyone wants to know, is beef, beef stroganoff. Ugh, <laughs> that's not even a good joke. <laughs> no. So we're laughing because 
it's just funny coming from a 12 year old and coming from Zachary. Yeah, I'm sure because he, has he had no, no idea clue. What that means. And, and I told him, I said, that's kind of inappropriate for a birthday card. I'm sorry, Mama. I'm sorry. I'm like, honey, it's okay. It's okay. So during the whole time, he's like, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. I'm like, Zachary, it's okay. So my sister in law is like, this is the best birthday card ever. <laughs> best birthday card ever. So then Max leans over and he goes, I don't get the punchline. I'm like, Give it a few years. You will. Because, <laughs> of course, Max is 15 and he's thinking food. Right. So he's not hearing. And no. plus, I don't, they say, they use different terms now. Than they did oh, God. Oh, my God. Yeah. But it was just so funny. And, you know, the two girls that we were with probably didn't get it either. I had to laugh when I saw that, though. Oh, my God. I, I was I cracking was like, up. And I said to my husband, I'm like, you didn't check this. But... We were laughing for a good three or four minutes. And I'm sure. It, I would never give it to her if I didn't think she would think it was funny. It. I'm sure he looked up jokes on the internet and oh, that my was like did. one of the top like, yeah, four. My husband did and, and you know, not even thinking. He just wrote. He probably was reading it, didn't understand it. Oh, it has something to do with a cow, you know. <laughs> That's funny. It was just so funny. No, it's not. <laughs> and, you know, my my sister and I was like, oh, yeah, this is the best ever. And I'm sure she shared it with everybody. Yeah. You know, That's like funny. I've done at work. I've shared it with everybody at work. It's just, it was fun. We had a good time. And speaking of ice creams, um, what they do for your dessert is they give you the ice cream and then you get to put the toppings on it. Oh, that's fun. And because that way you're limited to a certain amount. Right. You know what I mean? For ice cream anyways. And I got plain vanilla because they had like... Did you put jimmies on it? They didn't have jimmies. No kidding. They oh had chocolate God. pieces and M&Ms and, but no jimmies. But I put strawberry sauce on it and caramel because I like caramel. And, yeah, uh, I'm a big fan. When I get ice cream in the dish, like at the yogurt place, mm. I guess that would be frozen yogurt, but whatever. <laughs> I always get hot fudge sauce, whipped cream on vanilla with jimmies. <laughs> I always get jimmies. I always get vanilla ice cream and I always get jimmies. Well, you know, at first I picked something else. I don't even remember. Oh, I think it was mint chocolate chip and they came back saying that they were out of mint chocolate chip and I said, you know, that works out better anyways. I went for the vanilla because when you put like a flavored ice cream with all those toppings, it kind of ruins everything. Yeah, it's so, too much. That's why I like vanilla. Vanilla is like a good base. Flavor. It is a good base, especially it's when good you're doing with pie, toppings. It's good with cake. It's good in a sundae or when you mix a lot of stuff in it. It's like it, it's a good, that's, that's why it's my favorite ice cream flavor. Yeah. So that was our crush. My heartbreak Work, it's going to be interesting. Um, I've picked up a few days at the end of the month off-site uh, just because they really don't need me anymore at the hospital. But at the same time, I don't want to give up my shift because I don't want to give up my hours. Right. Um, so I have a feeling I'll be doing a lot of covering for vacations over the summer. There is an off-site that someone else is training for because I guess it's nobody wants to do it because yeah. it's... It really, and the, the, this is the thing that gets me is we do offsides, but we don't get anything extra for it, and we're doing more. Yeah. But I guess this offsite, they really have you do more. You have to actually like code in specimens, like yeah, it's an OBGYN office, so those oh. type of specimens. Yeah. And um, I said to a coworker, I said I'm not going there. She goes, What did she ask? I said, No. You know what? She ha she has me going to 14 out of 17 offsites. I think there's a few that I can say no to. You know what I mean? So it's going to be interesting to see what happens. My supervisor uh, is going per diem. She's going to be only working on Fridays. Supposedly they are looking for someone. I don't know. Oh. Does she want to leave? Or? Well, her father's not well. So, oh, so she needs the she needs to, schedule change. Yeah, she needs to spend the time with him, which is, you know, we were talking about it. She's like, I don't want anything to, I mean, he's not a young man. Yeah. You know, he's in his 80s, and um, she goes, I don't want to look back and say I regret not taking the time off. And I I totally, totally understand that. Been there, done that. that. Yeah. Um, so... We'll miss her, but I mean, I think it will be better for her for the stress and everything. And she's oh, been taking definitely. care of her grandkids and enjoying it. So I think this is a good thing for her. That's good. Yeah. It'll just be interesting for the rest of us. <laughs> 
Changes at work are always interesting. It is. And then we're talking about how um, I let my certification slide, which is fine. You don't actually, yeah. in a lot of places, don't need it. But we were talking about how to recertify. And uh, I might have to take the test over again, which is fine. But Yeah, you'd probably be even better at it now. Well, yeah. Um, yeah. And it would also, you know, that way, if I have to look for another job, yeah, I'll have it, re you know, recertified and stuff. So we'll see. Changes are brewing. I'm not a big fan of changes, but you know, it is what it is. There's not much you can do about it. That's, I think, all I got. I'm off this weekend. I'm really happy about that. Oh yeah, that's good. Yeah. Yeah. Um. Let's see. <sighs> my week, my heartbreak is that um, I'm trying to get medical care and my insurance company denied something that I need done, but it's not, I'm not blaming my insurance company because the woman who has been scheduling, trying to schedule it and dealing with all my paperwork, this is the third time she's screwed up. And now, as a result of her screw-up, I have to go into the city at 2 o'clock on Monday. <laughs> Which means you're not getting home until, like, 7. No. I'm, I mean, I'm going to be trapped there all afternoon. It's it's really inconvenient because we have to try to straighten out what she did. So that has bothered me all week. Um, and I had a migraine this week. Which I was getting before I knew about this, so I can't blame it on <laughs> No, her. but it certainly didn't help. <laughs> no, it probably made it worse. I'm trying to think if she, if I, I had the migraine on Tuesday. I think she must have called me on Wednesday because I think I had the migraine the day before I talked about her because I, I think I would remember if it happened at the same time. So that's been going on. I'm still working on packing my house up. We have about 20 boxes, 20 or 25 boxes packed in the basement. Um, we took a carload of donated books to a church in the next town over that collects donated okay. books. So we got rid of that. I have like a bunch of stuff that needs to go to Salvation Army. So I'm working on that. And um, I, my crush this week is that I finished doing my scrapbooking for the year 2013. So now I'm on 2012 and I have three complete. 2015, 2014, and 2013 are all complete. So that was really good. And um, my even biggest crush of all is that next week is when my husband gets his annual bonus, which means I can finally get a new computer. Oh, good. <laughs> my computer's been acting up for the last, like, seven months. It's like one of those things where I really need to, like, wipe it back to factory right. settings and start over, but I can't. So it'll be really nice to... Um, to be in a situation where I can get a new computer. And this one is, I think we figured this out like seven years old. So is it it's that time. Old? Yeah. It might be six years old, but it's it's wow. old. Yeah, you know, it's it still works terrific. I mean, for for what it is. I have a Macintosh MacBook Pro. I like it. But Every time I have to upgrade the operating system, it runs a little worse because it's just not it's, built yeah. to handle that software. And after this last update, which was in the fall, it's just, it's like on borrowed time at this point. So, don't tell me this is all messed up. I messed up. Taking a little break here. For Sorry the about this. I have to... Every once in a while, I just do, I forget when I'm slipping or knitting, yeah. and I have to fix it. So anyway, that's it for my crushes and heartbreaks. Um, my other heartbreak is I have to go to the Pinewood Derby this weekend. I love watching my kids participate in the Pinewood Derby, but there are like 60 other kids participating so the amount of time that I watch my kids participate versus the amount of time that I'm actually yeah. there. So I'm like 10 minutes of watching my kids, two hours and 50 minutes of watching everyone else's kids. Well, it's good knitting time. It is. I, I bring my knitting and I, you know, they have snacks there and everything. So, and I love like watching the races and stuff, but... It's a whole morning of sitting there with a lot of really loud people. So, I mean, 
children by loud people. Right, they're excited. Yeah, there's a lot of yelling. It's it's held in a church basement, Ooh. which is kind of like a gymnasium sort of thing, so it reflects sound. Yeah. It's very loud. And um, it's fun to watch the kids, and my kids had a lot of fun making their cars. Lily's is shaped like a banana. And Jack, of course, made a black limo-shaped car and decorated it with things from his favorite current favorite video game so oh. that's like every year he's like does a video game theme to car does it do it every year oh yeah they oh, do it every seems year like just a short time ago that they did it yeah they do it every year they make a car last year they had a, um, a parent option where you could put together a car on site oh. that day and they had markers to decorate it with. So you couldn't, like, shape it or anything. So, um... That's still fun because... It was a lot of fun because my 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 kids and their best friends got together with my dad. And they built what they called the flaming brick. And it was because it's square. Like, when you get a pine wood derby kit, it's like a piece of wood, like a rectangle. And that's what you make right. the car out of. And the flaming brick won. So... Oh, really? Yes. I don't know how... So they got to get, like, a big trophy for oh, it, and they cute. were all excited. Yeah, that was pretty fun. So anyway, that's it for Crushes and Heartbreaks. Gossip and Innuendo. We have the... Um, Knit and Worth Yarn Crawl is coming up. Next week. Next that's weekend. next week. It starts on the 17th and goes through the 20th, and on the 19th, our friend, Stitched by Just the Lou is going to have a trunk show at Circle of Stitches in Salem. And um, I'm going with our friend Diane, but Sheila might have to work. So. I, As of right now, I am scheduled to work. I don't see that changing. Yeah. So, it's, we're going to, because we want to go see, I only get to see Jess a few times a year. I know, because she doesn't live near us. No, she lives way out in Western Mass. So, um. Which I would love to see, but you know, we're comes first. Well, yeah, you can't really blow off work for a knitting event. I don't think they'd understand that. But I haven't been to the yarn crawl in like it's at least four, four years. years. <laughs> I know. It's been a while. Maybe longer. So Diane and I were talking about what we'd like to do. We might get some pho on the way home. There's a good um, restaurant on Route 1 on the way back from Salem that we're like, hmm, we might go there. So that'll be fun. It'll be like a day off. I should um I have Thursday off. Maybe I'll go up on Thursday. Yeah. I don't know how good it's gonna be. The first day it might be not might not be so bad. Yeah. I don't know if I will be going to any place other than Circle of Stitches. <laughs> I haven't I didn't talk to Diane about whether she wants to do more right, than more one than star. One, yeah. For me, I'm like, yeah, I'm mostly just going to see Jess, so I don't really want to go around. But um I don't know what the plan will be. I have to talk to her about it. It didn't occur to me. I was like, where are we going to eat for lunch? Let's go somewhere that we can't go with our families. Oh, really? Yeah. Jim and I can go get right. folk. He loves folk. But um, my kids are not really big. Oh. Um, unless they have some more Americanized options. Which they usually do. Um, but even then, they're like so picky. It's just not worth it. No, it's, I agree. It's more worth it if Jim and I go and we leave them at home. But, um, you know, because they love dim sum. We went to dim sum last weekend at Mary Chung, and they, they eat, like, all the different things there. But um, it's taken Foe's years. a little different. It's, take, it's a different thing, and it's taken them, like, years to, like, start branching out of their comfort zone. I don't blame sum. them. It took me a while, too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. There are um, certain things I would not eat when I first started dating my husband. Now it's second nature. And my kids, because of that, yeah. grew up with it. So to them, it's nothing. Well, and my kids have grown up eating dim sum. Probably not as much as we have, obviously. No, we don't eat at home like that. But we go quite frequently. Right. I'd say, like, at least every other month we get right. dim sum. So at least. Sometimes we go every month. But it's, you know... It's not like they're offered it at home or on a weekly no basis way. or anything like that. So it's taken them a while to get used to some of this stuff. Lily finally learned how to use chopsticks, so that was good. It's a tough one. I still don't. Uh, it hurts my hands. 
I love using chopsticks, but my kids have the cutest chopsticks that are like two that are attached yep. together so that it's it's easier. But um, Lily was able to do a real chopstick hold at the restaurant this weekend, so she was pretty oh, excited. Jack, Jack can kind of do it, but he's still, he you know, he's mega picky. Oh, right, yeah. He is the king of pickiness. He only likes grandma's crullers, which is like a donut. Oh, yeah. <laughs> And he likes um, crab rangoon. Mm -hmm. He likes um, pot stickers. Those are good. Yeah, those are good. And um, he'll eat one of those sweet lotus balls that we yeah. get, but they don't have that at Mary Chung. Oh. So I always get the red bean bun yep. there because I love I love red bean paste. It's mm -hmm. not everybody likes it, but I think it's delicious. And he was not a fan of that. He doesn't like the texture of it, which I get. It's yep. It's got kind of a weird yeah, texture. Yeah, it's got like a pasty texture. Yeah, it's kind of like gritty a little bit too. But yeah, well, yeah. it's ground beans. So, anyway, that was a little deviation. <laughs> anyway, I'm really excited because Diane and I might get to go get pho and we can go... And visit... Visit, Jess. well, Jess. I don't know if she, Jess will want to eat pho. She's really picky, but. No, but you get to visit her all the same. We're going to visit her. She probably won't come to lunch with us. I don't even know what time she's going to be there. I have it's to just going to say, I don't know. <laughs> there's, a lot, there's a lot about this trip that has not been, like, worked out yet. Well, you still got a few days. I know. I keep forgetting. My mom told me it was this weekend, and I was like, I don't think so. She was just confused. I was confused, too, because for some reason I was thinking it was this weekend. Oh, you were, too? Maybe we said it was this weekend before, and we just didn't No, realize. you know what it is, is I just forgot that... No, we always knew it was 17th, 18th, 19th. For some reason, I was thinking that this weekend was the 19th. That's so, anyway, I hope y'all have a good week. And, um... Thanks for watching us. Yeah. I really appreciate it. Knit with heart. Oh, I gotta wait. Knit with, with heart. heart. Bye.